You are qualified. What are you qualified for? You are qualified to take your seat at the table. Now I'm using table as a metaphor for voice, having a voice and using it wherever you go, in your family, at work, at school, in your community, wherever you happen to be. So what does it mean to have a seat at the table? And how do you show up when you get there? What are your responsibilities at the table? Well, I have watched people at the table all my life. I've studied, I've taught, and now I write books about these people. So who are they? We call them leaders. The truth is, we are all leaders. Now, I'll say more about that later. But let me tell you something. I ran away from leadership. I ran away from my seat at the table for many, many years. You see, I thought I had to be or do something special. What I didn't realize is that I was already qualified. Let me tell you a little bit more about me. When I was a little girl, I thought I lived in an all-black town. I didn't know the meaning of segregation. And though I didn't have words for it at the time, I was ashamed. You see, when my family went uptown, we had to drink from the water fountain that said colored. We had to go in through the back door. And the shop owners would call my parents by their first names, but we had to call them Mr. and Mrs. Again, I didn't have any words for it, but I felt that in my stomach. Even as a little girl, I knew from that and more horrific experiences that someday I wanted to make it impossible for people to prejudge my parents, me, or my sisters simply because of the color of our skin. Even though I didn't know it, that moment of awareness that moment of setting my intention was a moment of leadership. Now, financially, my family was very poor, but I didn't know it. We always had food to eat. <laughs> my mom's table was always the welcome table. Everybody was welcome there. Everybody felt a sense of belonging there. And my mom would use her superpowers to transform our usual meal of cornbread and buttermilk to buttermilk and cornbread. When I was nine, I remember living in a rough neighborhood in Detroit, Michigan. I remember seeing someone get stabbed to death in front of my house. By the time I was 12, we'd moved about 10 times. And several times a year, we would go back. We'd go back home to Mississippi. Now, my mom would spend a whole day frying chicken. Otherwise, we'd have to wait through the 18-hour drive to eat at my granddad's house because no restaurant would serve us along the way. We always left right around midnight under the cover of darkness so we wouldn't get stopped for a DWB, driving while black. Now, I have to tell you, I am grateful. I'm grateful for all of these moments. I'm grateful because they have made me who I am as a human being, as a businesswoman, as an educator, parent, and community steward. I'm grateful because they have formed me, they've shaped me, and they help me make the world a little bit better off than the way I found it. I am grateful because all of these moments, all of these experiences qualify me to have a seat at the table. Now, I am qualified not because I have a PhD and four other college degrees. I am qualified not because I've worked in corporate America. I'm qualified not because I became the first African-American woman to be an executive in the IT industry. 
I'm qualified not because I'm an award-winning author and poet. I'm qualified not because of what people think of me or what they project onto me. I am qualified just because. Just because. And here's some more good news. You are too. You are qualified too. This is not just any old seat at the table. This is about your seat. So let's talk about three things. What does it mean to have a seat? How do you show up when you get there? And what are your responsibilities at the table? Well, here's what it means to have a seat at the table. Having a seat at the table means to be included and to belong. Now, inclusion is not the same thing as belonging. Inclusion means you're at the table, you're in the seat, hallelujah, <laughs> right? But you don't want to just be there to warm a seat, right? Belonging means you are welcome. You are welcome up in here. All of you is welcome. Belonging means that you are valued, your presence is valued, your perspective is valued. Belonging also means that your voice is valued. Your voice is wanted, appreciated, and your voice is understood, which means you don't have to explain yourself over and over and over again. You don't have to worry about, am I, am I really being heard? You don't have to wonder about imposter syndrome. That's what belonging is. So how do you show up when you have a seat at the table? Well, you show up as a contributor <laughs> and you contribute in the ways that only you can. You don't want to be a parrot, parroting what other people say. You don't want to be a copycat, copying what other people do. You want to show up in your own two shoes as your authentic self. You don't want to leave 50% of yourself in the parking lot like I used to. You are there at that table for a reason. You are there because you have a particular voice. And you are there because your voice exists nowhere else at that table. Can I just tell you something? There are 8 billion, 8 billion people on the planet. And each one of us has a unique fingerprint, a unique footprint, and a unique voice print. That means that there is only one of you in all time. And if you don't bring it, if you don't bring your particular voice, if you don't bring your perspective, if you don't bring your special genius, who will? Who will? Now, in our interconnected global village, you show up with courage, with empathy, with humility, respect. You show up with hope and gratitude and love and vision and integrity. You show up with creativity and passion and perseverance and faithfulness. You show up with vulnerability. The kind of vulnerability that it takes to get you out of your comfort zone and take a deep dive into your learning zone. So what is your responsibility when you get to the table? Well, your first responsibility is to build relationships. So that means it's not all about you, right? Now, you want to ask yourself, how, how am I relating to people who don't act 
or look or think like me. And you want to build those relationships with intention, right? You want to forge those conversations one person at a time, one text at a time, one cup of coffee at a time. So you want to bring your voice as a relationship builder, and you want to bring it with an attitude of service, which brings me to your second responsibility. You want to be of service to people who are not at the table. That's right. You want to invite them. Why? Because you want to do for them what you wished somebody had done for you. This is all about each one pull one. So that's what it means to have a seat at the table, to show up, and to be of service once you get there. A number of years ago, I wrote a poem about being at the table. It's a poem about leadership. The poem is called Song to Myself. Song to Myself. This is a poem about being human. This is a poem about what it means to be qualified. It doesn't matter to me what you do or where you work. I want to know who you are when the sun goes down. It doesn't matter to me how much bread you can afford to put on your own table. I want to know if you will knead and wait and bake the bread and share your blessings at somebody else's table. I want to know if you can look into the eyes of the young woman who sleeps with fear each night, the one who dared to walk away from the hands that pummeled her. I want to know if you can share her pain. It doesn't matter to me what neighborhood you live in or what kind of car you drive. I want to know what drives you, what pierces your heart and keeps you awake, what inspires you to devote yourself to whomever or whatever moves you. I want to know how many times you've opened your heart and extended your hand to your homeless sister or brother. I want to know if you will grasp the sleeve of a nameless elder stumbling on his way and lead him in from the cold. I want to know if you will sit in the quiet dark hours between midnight and dawn listening to another's heart song. I want to know if you will throw away your cloak and open your heart, if you will dare to wear your soul on the outside. It doesn't matter to me what you say you will do for others. I want to know if you will act with courage and conviction. I want to know if you will cradle the frail hand of your mother when she no longer knows your name. I want to know if you will look into the hazel, gray, or ebony eyes of a stranger and say, yes, yes, to affirm your sister, your brother, yourself. It doesn't matter to me that you have a past. I want to know if you will celebrate your present, if you will take a stand, declare yourself, and sing, 
I am. I am boldly and with rejoicing, not only to the stars at night, but to anyone, anywhere, without apologies or regrets. This is what it means to be qualified, to be a leader. This is what it means to be human. Thank you. Thank you from TEDx Mercer Island High School Women.